Well, hello there. It's Aiken, and today we are going to be talking a little bit about the Mesh Island node. So before I get into what the node is and what it does, I want to give you a particular use case I stumbled upon yesterday. So as you can see, I've made this cobblestone road here. As you can see, there's like little cobblestones kind of flittered all about. And I wanted to be able to put a shader or at least have each one of these cobblestones set to a different underlying hue and then put the shader on top of that. Because in real life, each rock kind of has its own unique hue and there's kind of like, you know, roughness and material shit, some kind of shader or some kind of like um, moss or whatever on top of it, like dirt, all this other stuff on top of it. And most things in life are kind of like that. They have an underlying hue, and then they have all kinds of like, the environment affects that underlying hue. Uh, in art, it's generally called its local color for a more technical term. Anyway, so I wanted to be able to do this. However, I could not get, like I could not understand how to give it that underlying hue until I discovered something called the Mesh Island Node. So the Mesh Island Node is a node in geometry nodes that outputs information about separate connected regions or islands of a mesh. So to give you an idea of what a mesh island is, so whenever two vertices are connected together by an edge, they're considered part of the same island and they will have the same island index output. So this node's behavior is like really similar to the select linked in edit mode if you're used to using that or the random per island output of the geometry shader node. Now the problem with the second way of doing this, which is using the random per island output, is that you don't actually have that in Eevee. And I'm almost exclusively using Eevee. I don't, I very rarely use cycles. So if you're using cycles, then you can go ahead and use that. And that's probably the way that most tutorials online will show you. But the way that I'm going to show you today is a lot better because it is, it works in both Eevee and cycles. So as you can see here, I have the mesh island node, and then I put it into a random value. I take the index, so basically each one of these stones gets an index, put it in here, and give it a random value. So we just affect the island's index, the information associated with every single little rock thing with a random value. And then I can pop this into the geometry output. Whoops. Give me one second. And then we can come here and we can take a look at value. Now, I already have this kind of set up here. So I'm going to copy this name. I'll show you how to do this in a second. Copy this name, change the name to random per island. That should also show up here. As you can see, under the output attributes, random per island. So we have this random per island going into the group output. And then we have uh, an attribute, we create an attribute node. And that node contains the attribute name random per island. We feed that into a noise texture. So noise texture is actually what takes that information and applies random colors to it. And then we pop into a hue saturation value. So this just allows me to control the satur underlying saturation value of the actual uh, no noise texture. So we can plug this directly into the material output. As you can see, each one of these things gets its own color. And this is not my particular use case, but in this use case, each one of these has its own particular color. I can shift the hue. I can, you know, up and reduce the saturation. So this is like super uber saturated. It looks kind of like a kaleidoscope. I can change the value. And then I can also just change the fact, the factor. Um, I might just put a 1.5 for, to make it as saturated as possible. So in this node setup, it's not very complicated. So if you decide to download this file, the tutorial file will always be linked in the description. Uh, I have this node that I got from a shader pack, but 
Uh, if this node doesn't work for you, then you can just put any shader node. It's just a shader output, shaded RGB, and then I plug that in with an ambient inclusion. Ambient inclusion kind of feeds into this multiply node. Uh, and this multiply node is actually where we're going to be, the, the kind of combination magic happens. And then we can pop this into the surface. And then as you can see, they all get their own little color with the texture kind of popped on top. So, yep, this was a short and sweet tutorial, and this is one use case of the Mesh Island node, and there's so many use cases of this because you will sometimes need every single instance, right, data from every single instance on your uh, shader editor. So you might need, say, data from every single instance from geometry nodes, and you want to use that in the shader somehow because you want to affect the color of each one of the Mesh Islands, quote unquote, each one of the instances in your um, in your geometry node setup. Now, one important thing is that you need to have this realized instances uh, set here because if you don't have realized instances, what you'll run into is that um, instances do not have their own edges and points uh, and vertices associated with them. So you need to realize the instances and then use this mesh island node. Just one gotcha in case you want to use this in any of your other projects. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments. I read every single comment and I respond to almost every comment, like 95% of them if you check any of my past videos. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate this um, and happy blending. Peace.